Hello, dear Professor Leonardi. We are here in Vienna for the 12th Fork Congress for Neurorehabilitation organized by the WFNR. What is your first-hand opinion of the event so far, and have you participated in any previous editions? Well, I had the pleasure that I've been participating since the first edition, 24 years ago. From the beginning, I've been following the growth of this important organization. And uh, finally, after three years, we meet again. So it's a sensation of joy to meet old friends, to know new friends, and to speak about the professional uh, advancement that have been happening in the field of neurorehabilitation in these years. So the Congress is certainly putting together all the things, the personal and the professional elements, they are here, and we're more than 1,200 people from many, many countries sharing the same passion for neurorehabilitation and for our work. So the atmosphere is very positive, and I think it is great to be here and to share with many other colleagues from many other parts of the world the pleasure of our profession, but also the engagement that we all have in our respective countries. All right. And what do you believe is the overarching perspective of this year's Congress? Well, the idea is that uh, rehabilitation is really changing a lot. There have been many uh, things around the world that are sort of framing rehabilitation in a different perspective. There are global initiatives such as uh, in 10 years reaching the sustainable development goal for health and rehabilitation is certainly part of that. And uh, there is the Rehabilitation 2030, a big global initiative of the WHO that is promoting the idea that rehabilitation is a health issue, is not just something that should not be considered, it's something that has to enter in the health program. So the WFNR is really there. Neurological patients are number one patients uh, having a suffering disability worldwide. And I think we have been just finishing the COVID pandemic. And COVID pandemic where rehabilitation has suffering in many parts of the world showed that how much important it is to have rehabilitation. So we are here also to state this, that wherever you are in the world, whatever age you have, rehabilitation is something that's going to help you to recover your functioning. So this is the overarching I think we have here, trying to restate rehabilitation as a health problem. Ministries of Health have to take into account rehabilitation as part of the things that can be offered to patients with chronic neurological disorders. How does the multidisciplinary team approach enhance neurorehabilitation? Well, neurorehabilitation has been evolving along the last 30 years. And it is certainly true that uh, one person alone cannot respond to all the needs of a person who has a chronic condition. So in a biopsychosocial perspective, answering to the needs of people requires many people that do different things and all together they become a multidisciplinary team. Together with the technology, assisted device, reasonable accommodation. So the multidisciplinarity is not only many people with the same mind, but many minds for the same person. That's the idea, to work achieving and answering the needs. And it's much easier to do when you are many than if you have to answer alone to many questions of a person. All right. And what is the importance of patient outcome and follow-up in determining an individual outcome? More and more, it is clear that patients' needs are driving the uh, health uh, uh, demands. And uh, patients' needs can vary a lot. They are not only health needs. Certainly, patients have needs for good diagnosis, good care, good treatment. But I think rehabilitation is going beyond all this and is going also in the life events. So patient reported outcome measures are important because people, despite they have a health condition, they want to have a friends, they want to have a life, they want to work, they want to go to school. So rehabilitation has a role to bridge between health as well as other needs of a person. So that is why uh, it is important that patients are able also to to tell their needs, but uh, we as health professionals uh, have to ask, what are your needs? Uh, so it's a asking and answering that is to be implemented. All right. My last question would be, how can WFNR support the WHO Global Action Plan on Epilepsy and Other Neurological Disorders? Well, May 2022 signed a key point for neurology worldwide. 
Uh, it has been approved by the World Health Assembly, the WHO Action Plan on Epilepsy and Other Neurological Disorders, which is providing a 10-year plan to countries to implement neurological care, but also to support brain health. And I think the WFNR and the EFNR in Europe particularly are in the position to first of all state what is brain health. Brain health is not the absence of the disease. Brain health is all the possibilities that you have despite your disease to achieve a life that is full of satisfaction for what it is your need. And uh, in this sense, I think that uh, neurologists and neurorehabilitators are very much in the position to be advocate for brain health uh, with our ministries. So that is what is happening mostly in many countries, but the European, also the European Academy of Neurology is working with this, mm -hmm. trying to increase the awareness at the ministry's level that you can do a lot also to prevent neurological disorders, for example. You can prevent stroke in many manners, avoiding smoke and avoiding uh, unhealthy diets and moving. So all things that we all know, but we never put them very much together and strongly with brain health. I think it's time to turn, and this Congress I think is making the turning point also for the WFNR, to speak about brain health and to promote brain health worldwide. What we are looking for is neurology ambassadors. I mean, I think everybody who is listening to this and is working in the field of neurology with neurological patients could become an ambassador for brain health in his or her country and could also promote, for example, the development of patients association that can work together with doctors and health professionals to increase awareness at political level about the importance of working for patients and with patients and preventing neurological disease wherever possible. Prevention is possible, not only care, and together prevention and care will increase well-being and quality of life of all neurological patients. Thank you very much, Professor Leonardi, for being here. Thank you very much.